couple weeks back, I got a phone call from one of our kind of local customers here up in Fort Collins. They left a voicemail saying that they had an LM7 block, which is a Gen 3 LS, and somehow or another, they ended up with a sheared off main bolt. Story goes, they were putting in some aftermarket main studs and were struggling getting them in. Uh, I don't know the full story there. Uh, called it a night and when they came back, one of them had actually snapped. Then they proceeded to try and drill it, which I know everybody always wants to try and get it out yourself, but it just never really goes to plan uh, if you don't have some nice equipment to be able to do it. In this case, he did do at least a good job of getting kind of centered up on it when he drilled it, but was smart enough to say, hey, I, you know, I'm out of my league here. So called us up and said, hey, can you help me? Sounds like he already had this at another shop and they basically just told him to junk the block. I told him, you know, bring it in. I'll do a video on it. We'll see if we can save it. If not, you know, it is what it is. I ran it through the spray cabinet. The paint from the rebuilder came off in literally like five minutes in the spray cabinet. So not very good paint that was on there, but now it's a nice clean block at least. When I went through, all of the bolt holes had a ton of like dirt and grit in them. So I think they were probably trying to screw their fasteners in to dirty bolt holes and the threads were just kind of tying up and that's where they ended up with a broken uh, main bolt here. Now, I did not have a time cert kit for this, but a friend out in California, Josh's Engine Rehab here on YouTube, go check him out, subscribe to him. He had this kit, so he actually sent it out. And basically this is the time cert kit to install a time cert. It's kind of a jig that helps you get lined up. But to start with, I think that before we go to using this, we're gonna start with just a drill bit to see if we can get uh, what's remaining of the bolt out of it. First things first, we better make sure that we're level here. So right there, if I zero it, we'll go to the next main. About one and a half thou. One and a half. Yeah, we're pretty dang close. I found a drill bit that is perfect size for the way that that's counterboard on these inner main bolts. I mean, there's just a tiny bit of clearance there. So that'll work for getting us centered up there on that hole to try and go in and just drill out a little bit of what's left there before we start. I've also got the chuck kind of as close, lowered down as try to keep things up in the quill as much as I can and keep it rigid. I'm just gonna put a bunch of cutting oil down there. really tough to see get the microscope out that drill that uh, bolt is softer than I expected it to be so let's keep going a little bit Might have been the rest of it. I'm fairly confident this is working. So I guess, keep going. Now at this point, your eyes kind of tell you that you're going off center. 
but it's just because of how much of that bolt we're seeing. I think I felt it come loose down there. Okay, we can see the factory hole, the customer's slightly off center hole, but decent, at least it didn't screw anything up. And then we can see where I'm drilling it out to what the uh, counterbore diameter is roughly, like just a little bit smaller. At this point, all of that broken bolt has come out. Uh, I felt it when it did. And I think we can switch over to the time cert jig at this point. I think that worked really well. So there's the remnants of broken fastener plus the material I took out. So to give you some context of what we've got here, basically the kit comes with this jig and it also comes with a drill bushing that is sized correctly for the tool here, the core drill that it comes with. This bottom section here is what actually drills to uh, the diameter for our tap for our time cert. So this is the time cert that we're gonna be putting in. Uh, you know, it's a solid style insert should be equally as strong as the factory threads. When you first set this up, there's this little tapered pin that you press down into the hole while you tighten up the jig here. And then you take that out and now you have your drill bushing. It also, this has a collar set up right now. Uh, it's set up to drill the deeper holes. If we were doing one of the outer holes that are shallow, we could add in this uh, extra collar here and that would space it up enough so that you could drill for the outer holes here that aren't as deep. So we'll go down, drill until we get, you know, down to this point. Then we'll go in and tap, and they have grooves on here that kind of give you an indication as to how deep you need to tap. So basically, uh, for the inner one here, we'll tap to this until this upper groove is at the top of the drill bushing. Then we'll go in and install our insert using the time cert install tool. Kind of same thing when you actually use this tool to install them, it kind of swedges them uh, out into, into the threads that you've tapped in the block. So that's kind of makes them really solid in there. see where the top part is counterboard and then down at the bottom where it drilled to almost as far as the factory drilled it but not quite from the looks of it that went pretty swell so now I'll put some oil on that and we'll go in and tap some threads and according to the instructions we're supposed to go to that second line there level with the top of the drill bushing. I don't want to say what I'm thinking because I don't want to jinx it, but it'd be really funny, not funny if what I'm thinking happened. Come up out and clear the chips a little bit. So basically the last step is to screw in our time cert here. I'm just gonna lube up the install tool good. I'll put a little bit of green Loctite on the bottom of the threads. Should be good. Now we just screw it in.
And again, the tool is marked for how deep you need to make sure you go. So there it felt like it kind of seated. And there, we're more than deep enough. And the instructions say the top of the insert should be around 20 and a half millimeters. And we're probably right in there, 20.6, 20, 20, 20 and a half. I think it looks good. Almost would not even know. Well, I guess kind of the final test here, uh, I put the main cap on, put the studs in, and we'll just go through real quick and torque them and see if the time cert holds. So hopefully it does. Uh, he's got ARP studs here. So we're gonna go by the torque specs that ARP provides. Click. Okay, the inner two go to 60 pounds. And the outer two go to 50. I'm gonna go back to 60 just one more time to check those. Perfect. So as you can see, the torque held actually feels more solid than the normal threads, which uh, gives you confidence. The repair went well. I'm glad that the customer stopped before they broke off a drill bit or anything like that in there, because honestly, this made for a pretty straightforward repair. So if you ever wondered what was gonna happen when you sheared off a main bolt in your Gen 3 LS, it's actually savable as long as you don't mess with it. So. I guess drop a comment below, let me know if you think this is going to last. I think the customer will be pretty happy. It didn't actually even take me as long as I thought it would, but I, over the phone I just kind of gave him my best guess because I had no idea how messed up it was going to be. But came out really good and was actually a really easy repair. So see you guys in the next one.